What's going on guys? I'm glad you're here at Zebra Shoots, back with another video and a little bit of a broken capacity. I broke my hand about a week and a half ago. It got fixed yesterday in surgery. Nothing crazy. By the end of February, I'll be just fine. I'll be out of this in a week and a half and start moving around and doing therapy. My ability to shoot is a little bit hindered. I've been doing a lot of left-handed stuff, but I figured if there's anything I could talk about, it is a light. So I did want to talk to you today about the M2R Warrior Pro from Olight, why I think it is a quality light. It also is very affordable, which uh, stacking up against the other guys that are, you know, the mod lights and the cloud defensives, in my opinion, it stacks up well for its price point, and we'll get into that a little bit. First thing I wanted to talk about was um, quality and affordability in general. I hope that if there's one thing that stands out in my channel, it's that I try to bring you guys stuff that is both quality and affordable, because I'm an average dude with no sponsors. I'm not military, I'm not law enforcement, or former of either of those. And so um, the experience that I have with stuff is mostly playing around with my buddies at the range. And then what I'm looking for for me is quality and affordability. And I think that when it comes to this rifle build specifically, I guess this AR pistol build, I have found that balance. And I'm hoping that you guys find that in my videos as well, because a lot of you are probably like me, average Americans who are passionate about the Second Amendment and what it means to our country, and also super interested in firearms because they're just cool and they're fun to, to mess around with. So I wanted to kind of talk about why this light fits in with that quality and affordability with the rest of my firearm here. So let's start with the lower. It is an Aero Precision, who are like the king of affordability and quality. Aero Precision M4E1 lower receiver. It cost me $150 and it was all put together for me already. All I did was switch out the grip and throw on a brace. And those are the only modifications I have made to this lower receiver, and it has been great. Next is my upper receiver. You know, there are upper receivers out there that are $200 from Palmetto State Armory and Anderson Manufacturing, and those are not highly recommended. And then there are $1,200 Daniel Defense and, you know, $2,000 SIG MCXs. And then Primary Weapon Systems, which is what my upper is, even have $1,200 to $1,400 options for complete upper receivers. This this is the Primary Weapon Systems Mark 111 Pro upper. Their Pro line is meant to be their quality but affordable line. And I have found that with this beautiful complete upper receiver. It's 11.85 inches. Um, and this thing is a sub MOA gun right here. And from the first to the last round, it has been perfect. I have had no stoppages, no issues with accuracy, as long as my sights have been zeroed correctly. This thing has just hummed along and it was $600. So between my upper and my lower, I spent 750 bucks to get a quality, affordable working firearm. Now everything else that has been added on since, not particularly expensive, also affordable in quality, and I'm trying to continue with that trend. Um, so going on up to my optic, uh, if you've watched my last video, which I hope you have, this is the Holosun 512C. It comes in between $300 and $400, depending on where you find it, and it is feature laden. It has ridiculous battery life. It's got interchangeable reticles. It's got a huge field of view. It's got shake awake. You can change the brightness settings a million different ways. And uh, it is just, in my opinion, it's a very quality construction. And comparing it to the others like it, it is at least $150 cheaper than the next most affordable option. And in my opinion, more quality with the features overall. So now in comes the light, the Olight M2R Warrior Pro. I think that it stacks up just like the rest of those parts. Um, it has a lot of good quality and it's very affordable. 150 bucks on Amazon. I don't recommend getting most of your gun parts on Amazon because you could get fakes, but I wasn't worried too much about this light in particular and I had gift cards. So um, as you can see, it's very bright. It lights things up very well and I will show you more about that later. But I literally wanted to go through the features on the box and just talk about it. So first thing, high voltage 5,000 milliamp hour, 21,700 uh, lithium ion battery. Lithium ion battery, um, what that says to me is rechargeable, and it is. So um, if I turn the light on here, you'll notice this light 
come on right here. It is orange. It goes green, yellow, orange, red. And when it gets to red, that's when you want to start thinking about charging it because it might die soon after that. Um, but all you have to do is pull this guy off that goes to the tape switch and plug it into the USB cord that magnets onto it just like that. Uh, and let it charge on your nightstand overnight. If something goes bump in the night, pop it off, pop this guy back on, and you're in business with your tape switch. And we'll get into that mechanism a little bit better um, in a minute. But I think that it is extremely versatile to be able to recharge your light. I think that's super cool. It goes on to say delivering a maximum output of 1800 lumens and a throw of 300 meters. So that's a really, really solid throw. And I've tested that and it is true. It throws it super far. But I wanna talk about the lumens. Lumens are important. The more, the better. Same with candela. The more lumens and candela you can get, the better your light is. And the reason is because of the photonic barrier. And I'll give you a quick, simple example of the photonic barrier. If someone is shining a light at me and it's blinding me and I can't see beyond it, if I take a brighter light and shine it at them, the effect flips. They now get blinded by my light and can't see beyond it, and I can see everything in front of me. My light kind of gobbles theirs up and allows me to see past their light. So that is why in the long run, for the most part, you want to have the brightest light. The brightest light does win in this case, and there are other contenders out there that are coming in bright as well, but a lot of them are in the 1000 to 1400, maybe even 1600 range. This guy is dealing out 1800 lumens. That's a lot of brightness and it's really good and it provides a really solid hotspot, which I will also show you later in the video. Moving on. Charged directly through the tail switch with the included Olight magnetic charging cable. So that's where I kind of want to talk about what's going on back here because I kind of already talked about the charging itself, but the magnetic cable attachment really allows for some really cool stuff to go on. And all that is with the tape switch. So obviously here I have my tape switch. It's very clicky at the back at least. And it's got constant on, which you've seen. It also has momentary on now at the front. It just has a pressure pad. So no click, constant on, momentary on. Um, it's a little big, but there are bigger tape switches out there for sure. So it's not the biggest. It doesn't take up my whole rail, which I appreciate. And I do have a nice little spot right here where I can throw my thumb in for a good solid grip when I am shooting. And then a simple flip back to the switch where the pressure point is and I can get my light on. So I really like all the positioning. The cord also is not particularly long. It's also not too short. It's actually perfect because it comes up around and then kinks just a little bit in order to get that on there. One downside I will say to this light is that if I move this guy off just a little bit, now we're dead in the water. If I move it back, we're back on again. Now the thing is, this is a very strong magnet. You'll watch from about an inch away. It wants to come back and it wants to go right back onto center where it articulates with the light and lets the circuit be complete so that the light can come on. If you're worried about that, tape it down. It's that simple. I've done it and my hand is in here all the time messing around in this area and I don't have any issues knocking it out of the way typically. So if you want to, you can tape it, then you just have to untape it to charge it and that's the biggest deal. Let's get into one more thing that I think is very important. Crenellated strike bezel, crenellated, okay? So that's this guy up here and the serrations, it's crenellated, whatever you wanna call it. Really nice, thick, meaty strike bezel up here. And the reason that's important is because a lot of people, a lot of reputable people, and I'm not discrediting them, will say you should run your light back behind your muzzle device. And I think like there's some merit to that for sure, especially when it comes to not wanting it caked up with uh, carbon and stuff. But the issue that I have is that this is really the only configuration that the light works on my particular setup. Um, if I move anything, then it throws off my grip. My grip has to be here. And I got lucky enough that it fit on here just well enough that I could get my thumb in here um, for the grip that I enjoy. But I can't really move anything. And also I don't really need to because most of these people are prioritizing striking things with their muzzle device, glass and windows. Now I'm not saying I never will have to do that. I want to be, as you know, prepared for any situation, including having to strike something with my muzzle device. But I've seen videos of people, and I'm not gonna do this because other people already did it. They take this and they use the lens as a hammer face to hammer nails into wood. 
and the light is just fine after. If it can do that, I'm confident that it can break through a window or some kind of glass if it needs to and not have any major issues. The other thing that I'm considering is the fact that I'm probably going to be throwing a different muzzle device on here, one that's a little bit longer and a little bit quieter. Um, so this guy will be sitting behind my blast face at the end of the day anyway, once that happens in the next six or so months. Um, if you can guess what kind of long and quiet muzzle device I'll be throwing on here in the next six months, go ahead and sound off in the comment section and I will give you a big old clawed up high five if you can guess what it is. But the point I'm trying to make is that um, I like that they added the bezel on there. I think that it's smart. It's smart not to have the lens leading the edge of your light. So now what I want to do is I want to shut the lights off and I want to take this around the house and show you things like the hotspot and uh, show you how it lights up a room and stuff like that. So I've come down to the basement to give you guys some different views of different lights to compare to the Olight. So we're gonna start with the Enforce APLC. Pretty good little light for 200 lumens, in my opinion. It fills the room off the wall pretty dang good. There is a little bit of a defined hot spot in there. You can kind of see it as I'm moving around. That really nice bright little circle in the middle there. But when I compare it with the next two lights, you'll see that that hot spot kind of is really nothing. <laughs> so the next light is the Surefire X300. And as you can see, it has a really bright, really defined hotspot. We're bumping it from 200 lumens with the APLC up to 1000 with the X300. And it does a really good job not only filling the room pretty good off of the wall, but that hotspot, super defined. Notice that the light is very white, almost, you know, you'd say like an LED light shining on the wall. Um, anyway, I don't think it does as good of a job filling the room as the APLC, but I think that's because the light itself is more focused forward. So it's not spilling out the sides nearly as much and filling up the room, but it is focused on whatever your target is, which, you know, you might want one for one thing and one for the other. I like the APLC for home defense because it really fills a room. Whereas this might be better for being outside because it focuses that light forward. And now we have our subject, which is the M2R Warrior Pro. Big, heavy hot spot. Pretty good fill out the edges, fills the room pretty well. So it kind of does what both of those lights do just at the same time. Notice that hot spot is very defined. You can see the edges really great. Again, it is more focused forward than the other two were. So it doesn't fill the room quite as much as maybe the APLC does, but it focuses that light forward really well. So as you can see, very bright light, lights things up just fine. Um, from what I've talked about, it's very versatile. Uh, again, I haven't done a whole lot of low light shooting with it, but the low light shooting that I have done with it gives me great confidence in its ability to light up a target when it's really dark. Like it was pitch dark, no moon, no uh, stars that night that I actually went out and shot. I think it's a great light. And again, it fits in well with the firearm as far as my theme goes, which is quality and affordability. Guys, if you liked this video, I would appreciate it if you would like and subscribe. If you did not like it, go ahead and let me know down in the comment section why you didn't like it, and I will try to make my videos better for you in the future. And as always, I will catch you later.